Welcome back. We're excited. Moving forward, I'm going to talk about data collection and integration in this particular lecture. So how do we go about collecting labeled information? Typically, data is raw, kept in repositories, backup tapes, or databases in different places. So machine learning problems start with data, okay? And that's important because without data, we can't really predict. Everything is based on the historical data. And then using machine learning, we can predict the outcome. So preferably lots of data, examples or observations for which we already know the target answer. What does that mean? Well, for example, let's say you are going to predict new employee hiring okay for the next year so for that you need your hr data right because that's the historical data that you'll use to predict the target answer so data which you already know the target answer is called labeled data in supervised machine learning the algorithm teaches itself to learn from that label example that is provided so each example in your data must contain two elements has to have the target and the other element is the variables or features. The target is the answer you want to predict. So we provide data that is labeled with this answer, input this to the machine learning algorithm, whether it's classification, regression, or whatever we're gonna use. Then you will use the trained machine learning model to predict this answer on data for which we don't know the target answer. And this is the power of machine learning. So at first, you're actually telling it what to do. And then next, for any new data that is coming into the picture, right, it's going to start predicting accordingly, which is great. The other element that is required is variables or features. These are attributes of the example that can be used to identify patterns to predict the target answer. Okay, So these two are elements that are required when we're talking about collecting labeled data. The challenge, of course, nothing goes, you know, apart from challenges, right? We always have these challenges, which is great. Often data is not readily available in a labeled form. And this is by far one of the biggest challenges in ML. Collecting and preparing the variables and the target are often the most important steps in solving a machine learning problem, which is again, the most cumbersome, most difficult steps by far, because you are going to take the raw data and then you're gonna start labeling that information, right? You're gonna prepare your data, in other words. That's the term that we use. So preparing data means you're actually labeling it, you're putting in rows and columns, you're removing unwanted information, right? You don't want irrelevant data, etc. right? So the example and data should be representative of the data itself that you have when you're using the model to make a prediction. So for example, if you're trying to predict the new employee hiring, of course you're gonna use the HR data, right? You're not gonna use the financial data. That doesn't make sense. So it has to have or be representative of the data. So for example, another example, if you wanna predict whether an email is spam or not, you must collect both positive spam emails and negative non-spam for the machine learning algorithm to be able to find patterns that will distinguish between the two types of email. Whereas if you were, were to just feed in the positive spam emails, machine learning would not know how to differentiate. So another challenge is converting data into a format such as CSV file, each column containing one input variable and one column containing the target answer. That's typically a feature, right? So you need to have those columns identified. So all of this goes into the preparation of your data, and that's really a challenge before you can even move to the next steps. Next is the analyzing data. So when you wish to analyze your data, we need to have or take a look at certain important considerations. First is the variable and the target data summaries. It's useful to understand the values that your variables take for which the values are dominant in your data. For instance, does the data match your expectations? Is it gonna give you the result that you're looking for, right? Does it look like you have a data collection problem? Is one class in your target more frequent than the other classes? 
are there more missing values or invalid data types that you expect? So all of these questions need to be taken into consideration prior to even running a machine learning solution, by the way, okay? So you need to analyze your data. The other important consideration is the variable target correlations. What that means is simply knowing the relationships or the correlation between variables and target class. And that is helpful because if there's a high correlation, that would imply that the relationship between the variable and the target class is there. Include variables with high correlation because they are the ones with higher predictive power signal and leave out variables and low correlation because they are likely irrelevant, right? So you need to kind of analyze your data after you collect it and make sure that it's prepared accordingly to give you that target answer or prediction that you're looking for. Amazon Web Services is great because it allows us to run the machine learning solution in one platform. And that's exactly what you'll be seeing once we actually get to the hands-on for all of these concepts that we're actually talking about, such as Amazon S3, which is a bucket, it stores all of the data. It doesn't matter what kind of format data is in, it's gonna store it. We have the Amazon DB, Amazon Redshift, and web pages. So we'll take a look at those as we move forward into the hands-on section of the course. So if you have any questions on data collection, integration, data, how to analyze data, feel free to post in the discussion area. I'll be glad to help with this. Let's move to the next lesson.